Well, how do the people in the viewing verse design Captain of the Steves? And today, chums, I'm drinking myself a hot chocolate. Gingerbread hot chocolate. It's lovely. Yeah, remnants from Christmas time. Anyway, people, I've got some news about Starfield. So Starfield over on Bethesda Softworks have actually just put on out a new freaking trailer, mate. I know, right? Right, well, let's jump on over. Let's have a look at this together, shall we, people in the viewing verse? Heck yes. Boom! There I am on Tinter Webs, and I'm going to make this nice and full screen. I've already upped it to 4K. I'm going to hit play, people, and take a watch of this. It's freaking awesome. This is Constellation Star Station L0868. Welcome aboard. showing signs over another one of those big anomalies. Maybe you catch a smile and uncover the source of it all. Hey everyone, from myself and everybody here at Bethesda, we are so excited to finally tell you when Starfield is coming out this year. You know, we have poured ourselves into this game and even I'm surprised how much we can pour. It is large. Uh, we're playing the game all the time. Shout out over here to lead producer Tim Lamb. Old school fans, you may remember him from the Oblivion making of video where he's sitting on a similar sofa doing similar things. But also, uh, this June, we're gonna bring you into the studio and give you a deep dive in the game at our Starfield Direct. There's so much that we still have to show you. The game has many of the hallmarks that you'd expect from us, but it's also a very unique experience. And again, thank you all uh, for all your excitement about the game, your support, your comments. We really do uh, read it all. And look, we know you've waited a long time to play something new from us, you know, believe it or not, we're kind of the same. Uh, we miss it, and we really just can't wait for you all to play it. So thanks, and we'll see you soon. OK, people, so we've got two dates. We've got one for Starfield Direct, and then we've got one for the release date. OK, so that's pretty darn freaking riveting stuff, isn't it? Let me just um, so come out of there quickly. Ah, I've hit replay again. Let's just close that window down. There we go, peeps. Anyway, I'm going to make myself a little bit bigger on the screen. I'm going to talk about what I feel this means. I mean, yes, we've got two dates. Um, we've had dates in the past for Starfield. Let's just hope that this date is a little bit meaningful than any of the others we've had previously. But yes, September time. Now, they did say first quarter of this year. Well, at least the announcement trailer is coming somewhere inside of the first half of this year, or first quarter, or first half, whatever. Yeah, first half, really, isn't it? So, yeah. It does mean, though, that we've got to wait until September to get our hands on this. But as long as it's done, that's the thing. If it's a game that's playable, that hasn't got too many bugs in it, then it's worth the wait. It definitely is worth the wait. So I can't wait. Well, <laughs> then I'm saying I can't wait, which I literally I'm excited for this title. Now, I did a video the other the other week talking about excitement levels being at an all time low because of maybe the pandemic and a lot of the games that we're seeing coming out of that have been very sort of rinse and repeat old franchisey type games that are known recipes. There's nothing that's really gone out as a new IP, but this is a new IP coming from Bethesda Studio, a studio that sometimes delivers and sometimes misses the mark slightly. Anyway, I put a video link up there to that video that I'm on about with, um, you know, experts expectations and excitement but for me this game is something that i feel could be a little bit special i mean there was moments there that you could see inside of that trailer that my reaction like seeing those creatures on that planet 
freaking awesome i can't wait to get out there and explore and start seeing what this universe has to deliver in so yeah the imagination of the people at bethesda this could be something special at least i'm hoping it will be but what does this mean for like no man's sky and my channel and stuff like that well i'm going to continue doing no man's sky even after you know starfield drops no man's sky is going to be my go back to game and it's always going to be that way it's going to be the the, the dominant game on my channel until hello Games stop supporting this and even then i might continue doing no man's sky content so that's ne it's never going to go away is what i'm saying or for the foreseeable future as far as i can see even when starfield does drop but what i'm thinking this does for hello games now is they normally do you know updates throughout the year and normally they deliver something larger towards the summer which is going to be before hopefully Bethesda hits the ground running with Starfield so I'm hoping at least something comes out from Hello Games this year that gets them up the Steam charts to where they want to be to really give Starfield a run for its money I'd imagine as soon as it drops in September it's going to be one of the biggest selling games but you've got to think it's only on PC and Xbox it's not on all platforms so is it going to really outshine the likes of say Hogwarts Legacy that is on multiple platforms I don't know. We're going to have to see. I'm just wondering how many awards it's going to pick up against Hogwarts coming out so late in the year as well. It's a bit of an odd play, isn't it, really, for Bethesda to release such a hard-hitting game towards the end of the year, the tail end of it. We'll see. We'll see if it works out for them. I hope it does, Bethesda. I really do. But for anyway, Hello Game Studio, I think I've got a little bit more wiggle room now. I think that now if they can deliver in a couple of nice updates this year and maybe one big chunky update this year, they stand a chance of being quite high up in the Steam charts. We'll see how that goes. I know that Sean Murray put out that tweet earlier in the year to say that he wants to make this a big year. I want to see how he does that. Yes, I guess I do. But now I think that, you know, a bit of the pressure's off. Starfield isn't dropping in the first half of this year like Bethesda originally said it would so there we go people I think it's good news for the Hello Game Studio I think it's a good news for No Man's Sky players as long as there's a steady stream of updates this year whether they're small ones and maybe a larger one or whether it's just expeditions to keep the interest going on No Man's Sky I kind of think it takes a little bit of pressure off the Hello Game Studio and they can take a bit more time with putting something awesome and special together is what I'm putting together inside my own head. I'm trying to put on a business cap. I don't have a business cap, but that's kind of my thought process. Let us know what you think inside of the video comments. Heck yeah, that's brilliant. Awesome. Thank you very much, people in the view of us. Oh, actually, I could address the poll that I did over on the Tinter webs, couldn't I? Heck yes, I could. Um, so yeah, I put out a poll the other, the other week on um, my channel page on my community tab around whether there might be a big update this year so let's go and jump over to there because this does tie into that quite loosely doesn't it in a roundabout way it does there we go let me um, go back to my reaction camera we jump back over on the tinterwebs people while I'm thinking of it Chicka boom! there I am over on tinterwebs so I put out this poll here with No Man's Sky being launched on Switch and PSVR 2 and soon to be on the iOS this year, do you think we might see a return to the old model of updates, small quality of life updates for the hardware releases, and then a giant update in the summer? Question mark. And it's had 441 votes. So a lot of people, 14%, have said, yes, that seems plausible and logical. You know, Gibby emoji year, perhaps. I think Hello Games needs to kind of deliver in something that big, that impactful, to really sort of you know, guarantee that they're going to hold on to a player. Because I'm being such a similar game, I just think a lot of people that have got Xbox or got a powerful enough PC, they'll be jumping over to Starfield to at least sound it out. So maybe we might see a dip in Steam numbers is what I'm thinking. And that's kind of, Hello Games has said that they want to try and be up the Steam charts. It's, that's all I'm thinking. Okay, so maybe the last year has been has been odd for updates. So yeah, they, uh, who knows? Who knows? Because it has been a little bit odd. We've had two very odd updates, but there have been hardware ports, haven't they? So 15% have hit that. No, no big update this year. Just expeditions and quality of life. 18%. That's more than the yeses. The hard no versus the hard yes. The nose have it, people. The nose have it on this one. Hope so. Remaining positive and hope we see the content. That's kind of the boat that I sit in. I kind of really hope that something is going to happen. And positive me is thinking, yes, it would be plausible for them to hold their own and to steer the ship clear for a decent year. 
but yeah, maybe there might be a bigger update on the horizon. It does feel like everything's building to something when it comes to Hello Games and the way that they've been pushing. And then 19% though have said doubtful. I think the work has moved to their new game in dev, which is another thing, isn't it? Hello Games could come out with an announcement of something that's freaking crazy that just blows people's minds in the next, like, what? Well, they've got quite a fair few months now. They've got another six months to do that. <laughs> so that could equally happen. So this throws a real spanner in the works, doesn't it, people in the view of us? It does indeedy duty. So let's hit on up the comments. Joe says there'll be more updates. Sean literally said they have much more to come and the ideas are getting increasingly weird. Yeah, but then straight after he said that, Joe, they put out living frigates. So part of me thinks, was he just referring to the living frigates that they put into game? But yeah, I know what you mean. And he also said, you know, that they're not running out of ideas. They've got loads of them in a roundabout way. And yeah. Again, Sean has stated several times that there'll be no big updates. They may add features to the game, like Frontiers, Outlaws, and Sentinels did, but I doubt they'll see anything like Next or Beyond. Yeah, maybe they've gone too far down into that route now, people. I mean, Sean Murray even himself, when he was on the Origins interview, he did say that they've got a nice problem. And the nice problem is that pretty much the community owns the actual universe now. They've all got bases and things, and it's very hard for them to put in anything big and meaningful. There are ways and means they could probably scoot around that, but it means a lot of work for them. On a game that's six years old, would they rather move their efforts onto their new title? Maybe. Now, I did counter that, what you said there, to say, yeah, they did say, well, that. They said that they won't put out any big updates, but then they put out Ultra Origins. So who freaking knows? And they're growing their team. They've just done another recruitment drive. So who knows? It's a bit of a weird one. Your guess is as good as mine, Boomstick Joe. I'm not having a dig or anything. I'm just saying, you know, there's all sorts going on there. Okay, Salomon Andre. I hope there is an overhaul with the PlayStation VR 2 version. Right now, there seems to be a few missing features, both from the game, such as zooming in with the analysis visor, HUD elements, clipping into the environment, or hardware, such as complete lack of votive rendering and eye tracking and the non existent support for left handed players, just to name a few. I thought that was very weird, because I actually put in the patch notes about right handed and left handed players. For flat mode, not the PlayStation VR, where it really freaking matters, you know? So that's um that's an oddity, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement with you there. I've just picked up PlayStation VR 2. I haven't played a lot of No Man's Sky. I'm entertaining myself with all the other demos, mainly because I'm waiting for that massive great big bug fix to come in and fix a lot that's wrong with VR right now, and then I want to do a proper review of it. Um, because, yeah, I don't want it to take away from my experience, hopefully, you know? So, yeah, just waiting for that to happen, and then I'll jump straight back into No Man's Sky. Brad, as much as I love to keep looking forward to all that great updates, I think now the game has reached its peak, and what we have is about it. Sure, they still have little things here and there, but something really game-changing, not looking likely. I kind of have to agree with you in the way that we've had the t last two updates, anyway. But um, there are a lot of loose ends that kind of hint at things that might be coming into the universe. But then again, I've been saying this for ages about the Void, the Realm of Glass, and the Ariadne story, and so many other things that I could bang on about for freaking hours. But there we go. Voltin says, I've been hoping for the past five years that they'd go the DLC route, or paid expansions, as the only way that I can see them putting in any real game-changing work in. At this point, I don't think Hello Games have got it in them to make a game into much more. And that's just not an insult, just an acknowledgement that they've given all they have to it. My hope is that another studio stands on the sole shoulders of giants and take a similar game engine to a new level. Well, it is their own game engine, so I don't think they'll be doing it with a with um, a similar game engine or, or something similar in a way of procedural generation. But then, saying that, Bethesda has used procedural generation to generate the rest of the planets, other than the little hub zones that they've made on the planet. So, maybe, maybe Starfield is that. It is shaping up to look quite rather lovely, isn't it? I'd imagine people are going to be zooming into all that lovely footage that we just saw and making videos on it and going to town... I might have to do some analysis of that videos myself. And then there's quite a lot of sort of retort backwards and forwards there from the No Man's Sky community, which I won't go into too much. Drone Tech, Captain Steve, I think they're working on a new No Man's Sky 2. It's just a hunch. They learned a lot from the first one to make a much better second one, says Drone Tech. Well, I've done some speculation videos, Drone Tech. 
on what I think their new IP would be. And I don't think what you're saying is too far dissimilar to what I've been saying. I put a link to that video up there. You might want to go check it out. Yes, because there's a bit inside the Remembrance Law where the actual creator of the Atlas and the simulation is talking to the Atlas and the simulation and actually says that we're moving on to make a secondary simulation. And I kind of think that's Hello Games putting a little hint at what they've got planned inside of No Man's Sky. Yeah. Yeah, you still watch that video, and there's a lot more to it than that. I think I gave up hope after Frontiers. If we did get a substantial update, I'd be generally surprised. But we did have, after Frontiers, we have had Endurance, in all fairness, which um, did sort of bottom out freighters and, and add a lot more depth to freighter building. And I'm hoping that they do other updates like that and go and revisit elements of No Man's Sky and expand it and extend it. I mean, Frontiers did that for base building and then Endurance did it for set for uh, freighters. But it'd be nice to see another one for, say, settlements and, and stuff or even ship customization and ships themselves. Joe, I think they obviously have been busy with the ports. I cannot wait to see it release on iOS so the team can get back to putting actual content in game. Kind of feel the same way, Joe. Hurry, Fook! I wouldn't mind if they went the Minecraft route and did one big update a year. Yeah, I mean, that's how they used to do things, but then the silence was deafening throughout the year for content creators. But yes, if they put in something that gave enough content to carry it from year to year, I'm definitely with you on that. Heck yes. Let's be real, the game is almost seven years old. Its revenue stream dried up long ago, hence the port to Switch and iOS in an attempt to create a new market. Using the same old assets in slightly different ways with minimum development time is a more realistic way of looking towards future updates. No Man's Sky may be a labour of love, as Sean calls it, but at the end of the day, love don't keep the lights on. <laughs> oh, that's, um, that's a way of looking at it, for sure. It really is, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it does kind of feel like they're winding down to move over to a new IP, but they, 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 you never know with Hello Games. You really don't. Okay, so thun Tide of Thunder, they said 2023 would be a big year for No Man's Sky, and then 2022, yeah, they did over on Steam, so their Steam sort of stuff. They want to try and make it a big year for them. So the only way they can really do that, I think, is by putting out something big and meaningful. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, they're up against some really freaking awesome titles this year. Not just Starfield. There's like um, Nightingale that's coming out. There's Under a Rock that's suggested to be coming out. There's a, no, both of those are both procedural games, and they both look freaking fantastic. Go check them out. Okay, we got Stan Anderson. The more hardware to develop for, the more time required for optimization. I think the updates containing big changes or features being hardware demanding is out of the window, especially after they decided to include Nintendo Switch. Water physics on Switch? Forget it! Changes to terrain, fauna, flora, generation? Maybe, but not if you mean requiring anything more on the hardware of the weakest link, the Switch. Also, the base builders wouldn't like any changes that would mean potentially ruining their hard work. Cities again, the Switch. <laughs> From the moment they announced that No Man's Sky was coming to Switch, I suspected this would mean that the only expansion of No Man's Sky going forward would be mostly more about the platforms instead of the technologies and features in the game. I wish it weren't so, especially since never actually got the game I pre-ordered. Although they did improve the game, it sadly also moved further and further away from the ideas that have made the game interesting to begin with. You know what, Stain? I have made a similar sort of video around all of this. And uh, yeah, it's a bit of a ranty one. I'll put a link up there anyway, above my head. Go hit that one up, because it's kind of chiming in on the same sort of thing that you've picked up on there. And Die says, Sean Murray in Hello Games, looking at the guy running it. He's like the Willy Wonka of gaming. Just look at his Twitter feed. It's all about ego recognition, praise and hype, and kissing and being led down the garden path. Now he's like a nominated for Games Award and BAFTA or something. He's all about teasing screenshots of emojis and plenty of other nonsense and whimsical things. To be honest, it's no wonder No Man's Sky has such a troubled past and present and doubtful future. I lost interest in No Man's Sky. Now the developers fail to retain my attention due to lack of meaningful content. I do feel that they need to add more content in that brings players back in to do something on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. And how they do that, I don't know how they're going to do that, but it needs to be end gamey type stuff and something that isn't too grindy and actually adds a fun element in. I have put out loads of idea videos on how they could go about doing stuff like that. 
But um, yeah, I'll get to an idea sort of tweet that I saw earlier in the verse in a second, people, that I would love to go over with you and just show you something. Might get teased with No Man's Sky 2 sequel. That's what I'm thinking as well. You know, I did say about that earlier, about trying to get something out before the Starfield release. I think you could be on something there, Tree Ninja. I think we're in agreement slightly. Austin Air Co. I recently visited HG Jobs Board and even for a new coder, recent graduate, part of their responsibility is code new features to game. Now, how much leeway a new entrant level coder would be granted to implement new features? Question mark. But at the same time, it's clear indication to me this game has extremely long shelf life. Yes, yeah, some of the actual game, actual advertisements mention about putting in expeditions and things like that. So who knows? I think there's definitely going to be more expeditions, but whether there's a big meaningful update, I think they have to if it's going to be their only game that they have out this year, or the only big announcement is going to be updates for No Man's Sky. I think that's the only way they can climb those Steam charts. Okay, Michael Carplay says console superior, formerly Ray Rod, Red Mass, and modification support multiverse. It would be nice to see mods come into No Man's Sky, but I don't think we're going to have a mods list put into No Man's Sky until after Hello Games themselves finish development on it. So maybe it's in the near future if they are to move to a new IP. It could happen, Michael Copley. Dave Langer, we're never getting next size update again. I hope you're wrong. I really do hope you're wrong. But I think I came back and said, considering how many bugs are in a non-update makes you think you're right. Yes, Fractal was quite a small update. In fact, the bug list is probably longer than the actual fi the things that they added in. It's, it's a bit scary, to be honest. Switch can't even handle an ugly Pokemon looking game, says Esso. Well, I don't know about that. Zelda Breath of the Wild was pretty darn freaking fantastic, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, it, it does make you see things, see things a little bit different with um, Nintendo Switch. A lot of their best games seem to be the Nintendo games, don't they, at the end of the day. But, you know, that's kind of kind of a given. Um, Procedural Traveller, let's jump on over to Procedural Traveller, because he found this tweet that he put out there. Let's scroll on down. So this is, I think it's fan-made. I don't think there's any sort of truth to this. I, I have looked at this quite in depth. I mean, even Travellers has got a double L in it, the same way that UK people spell Travellers. Some places they take out an L, but I don't know. Here we go. No Man's Sky Oblivion. No Man's Sky... Okay, I'll just read the actual notes here. So the first line remains the same as normal. A brand new corrupted universe full of anomalous star systems allows travellers to brave a new environment, which is pretty darn cool. I don't know whether I can make this any bigger for you guys. No, I don't think I can. I don't think I can zoom that in. No. Okay. New 90 hours worth of story content, allowing travellers to uncover the ultimate fate of the multiverse. Three unique starship classes provide new playstyle opportunities for travellers. A new procedural engine overhaul provides unparalleled opportunities for limitless exploration. Custom mission creation tools allow players to create and share and download mission sets in-game. That'd be freaking awesome. A brand new mystery lies at the center of the galaxy for travelers who complete the new overhauled journey. And it's the same sort of sentence that they usually end up on. Now, I think this is a fan-made thing. It got put out there by Dmitry Smirnov. And when I jump over to Dmitry's page, um, yeah, it's, it's hard to say whether he actually conjured up this himself, shared it from somewhere else, or found it from somewhere else. But yeah, and, and all the comments that I'm seeing on here is just like, oh, this isn't happening. Um, if I can get the blinking comments to come up. But yeah, this isn't happening, you know. Sean, give us an emoji. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. So I think this is just fan-made. Maybe Dimitri made it. I don't know. He hasn't put where he got the source from. And, you know, it's not April the 1st, so I don't think it's an April Fool's joke. <laughs> it's, a, it's a month early, to be fair, people. But who knows? I don't know. I don't know whether this is a real thing, where he found it, or whether he created it. But you know what? If that was a real update, that would freaking that would freaking hold its own, wouldn't it? That'd be amazing if that was a thing. If that was a thing, that would that would probably give Starfield a run for its money. It doesn't say it's about Starship customization, though. <laughs> but yeah, I really like some of the ideas in there. Some of the ideas that are inside of there, I've actually done whole videos on and put ideas out similar to those. So very cool, like an alternate realm, like the Realm of Glass or the Void. And I have mentioned in the past about being able to make our own sort of expeditions that other players can download and go off on. I'd done one on um, Professions, where I put that out there. I put a link up there to the Professions video. Go 
check that one out if you like the sounds of making your own mission sets and things anyway people i think i'm going to be ending off now and um i just want to say a massive great big thank you for watching i'm going to drink the rest of my hot chocolate starfield news is freaking fantastical isn't it really is yeah very excited can't wait for september to roll around or even the is it june or july mid-year sort of announcement sort of thingy very much looking forward to that too and that new trailer pretty darn freaking awesome it's nice that they've stuck it in 4k and i'm fairly sure people are going to go over that with a fine freaking tooth comb to find some nuggets of awesome information so at least we've got something to speculate on and go over where it comes to starfield which i might do my own video my own take on that anyway people take care goodbye goodbye and goodbye again